Hello everyone, my name is Sonzy Boy and welcome back to reading. I don't know what to call this yet. I'm just gonna call it reading. Uh, my lights are not situated to the way they are. I'm sorry if I sound a little sad in this recording. One, it's night time, so I am decently tired. And two, uh, <clears throat> uh, I just got finished with assassination, assassination classroom. So I am, like, decently sad <clears throat> and tired. Trying, not, trying hard not to actually feel offended, it's just an act. He reminded himself, it's just an act. They think the best way to make good is to treat me like I'm bad. Alec added in mock outrage. If you ask me, he's pretty sociopathic. Sociopathic, I don't know. Now he was a f now he was fake arguing that fake acting bad was the best way to counteract his parents' fake anger at his fake at his real bad behavior. It was all getting pretty. Me it was all getting very meta. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Alec could feel a headache forming behind his eyes. Look, said Hazel, suddenly sounding older than her almost ten years. Don't make take this in the wrong way, but you've gotten, but you've sort of been losing your touch. My touch, Alec added, putting his hand on the hottest part of his neck to try it and shield it. Only yesterday, Hazel had been terrified to be blunt with him. Maybe he is... He really was losing his knack for intimidation. You used to be pretty good at hiding it. You used to be pretty good at hiding it, she said. And she looked hard at him. So he knew she was waiting for him to catch on. When he didn't answer, she sighed and said, You used to get away with a lot more. How's that my fault? He said, not really liking the way he sounded pouty. If anything, it's your fault. She blinked at him slowly. They only started to think I was the bad one when they figured out you were the good one. Hazel looked back down in the water at this time. He thought maybe he saw something of the old Hazel. The one who seemed to tiptoe around him with an apology on her lips. Like it was a lost cause thinking they'd never be friends. To Alex's great amazement, he felt a twing of remorse for that. A feeling he quickly buried. Okay, what's your counter plan? He asked. Her solution was too simple. Be good, she said. Alec laughed. What else could he do? <laughs> That's your master class in playing our parents? Reverse reverse psychology? She shrugged. If, if you're a little bit nicer and I'm a little bit worse, maybe it'll neutralize the attention enough for them to leave us alone for a change. Alec let his jaw do that thing where it dropped. He let his body experience the full shock, shock he had restrained for so long. And he did it in front of the least likely person. Golden Hazel. Golden Hazel. Okay. The child who who did what she was told to when she was told to do it. The straight A's and the coordinated piano fingers, the dish cleaner, the classroom helper, the easy parent teacher conference, the perfect child. Maybe she didn't want to be perfect anymore. How had it ever occurred to him that his lot in the family was just as burdensome as hers? Why had he the tiny sparkle in her eye never caught his attention. The one that said, Let's trade places for today. When did she stop being Golden Hazel and simply started being Hazel, a kid? All the more reason to trust her, she, he thought, his resolve hardening. She was tired of pretending to be the good one. She was ready to advance to a full bad kid status, which meant she was definitely up to something. Do you think you can do it? He asked, not meaning it as a challenge, but as an actual question. Be bad? Can you be good? She asked from her. It definitely was a challenge. They agreed to test her, their, her theory. 
that night as sort of a trial run. The parents were obviously committed to their own experiment prescribed by the plan planner. They had been on Alex's case all day. They scolded him for falling to pull his clothes in the clothesline. They had omniscient him from playing video games before completing his homework, even though it was spring break. They'd even lectured him on the importance of flossing a strange battle to pick after spotless cleanup during his most recent dental cleaning. By the time dinner was rolled around, Alex's face hurt from smiling. His neck was sore from nodding. His blood had boiled so many times that day. He was surprised he hadn't cooked from the inside out. He swallowed every scolding, every caving, and the temptation of sassing his parents. And true to the, her word, at each confrontation throughout the day, Hazel had there to take a portion of the burden away from Alec. She had chosen that morning to show their mom the less than stellar grade on her spelling test from the previous week. She'd accidentally dropped her dad's shirts in the mud when she pulled them from the clothesline. And in response to the great flossing debate on Monday afternoon, she, we, she marked at the first of herself. Hazel mouthed off. How many cavities do you have in your last checkup? She muttered within an earshot of her mother. Young lady, what's having, what has gotten into you today? Their mom said. And as Alec and Hazel rounded the corner to retreat to their separate bedrooms after dinner time, they tapped fingertips and hid their smiles. But as soon as Alec closed his own bedroom door, he reviewed every moment from the day to analyze his sister's actions. The way she jumped in too readily to deflect the scolding meant for him. The way she'd been too, so ready in the smart comeback from, to their mom. The time she winked conspiratorially, I think, at him at the winter ta dinner table. It was all just a little too perfect, this little show she was putting on for him. You're not clever enough to play this game. <clears throat> you're, you're in way over your head, sis. He had five years on her of playing the role of the bad seed. If she thought she was going to usurp that title, she was in for a rude awakening. The next day was more or less of a repeat of the previous one, and their parents declared, decried Alex's lack of manners and the breakfast table. Hazel burped, and then Alex's dad accused him of scratching the side of the car with his bike. Hazel unapologetically took the blame. When Alex's mom wondered aloud when the last time was that Alec had insisted on the vegetable. Hazel's quick response was to ask when the last time was that their parents had cooked an edible one. That night, Hazel joined Alec on the perch at the top of the stars. They listened to their parents puzzle through the past two days. Is it just me? Or does Hazel seem to be going through a phase? Their mom whispered to their dad, teaspoons clinking against the sides of their coffee mugs. I thought it was just my imagination at first, their dad agreed. Their parents, awe at the unmistakable. Did you hear what she said to me this afternoon? Their mom asked. She actually said she thought I was starting to look haggard. Haggard, Ian? Do I look haggard? No, but you sound haggard. No, but you sound haggard. Alec mumbered, mumbered, muttered. Hazel had to stifle her laugh, but Alec was too irritated to find the humor. His parents were infuriated. Was it really so unbelievable that Hazel could be even nastier than predictable rotten Alec? Well, could anyone blame you for being haggard, their father said. Ooh, wrong answer. Ooh, wrong answer, Hazel whispered. At, and this time, Alec did find the humor, and his laugh caught him off guard. So when, so then I do look haggard. Hold on, let me just skip to one, ten, and then put the bookmark here. I'm not, I'm not going there immediately, but uh, I'm just skipping it so I can put the there. <clears throat> so then I do look haggard. Their mom said, and I look hear the te teaspoon clinking faster and faster against the ceramic. One of them was confusedly stirring. Of course not, Meg. We can try to focus on the kids. He said, and their mom let out a single, uncharitable, ha ha, ha, I don't have the voice. Oh, now look who's ready to be an adult, said their mom, and Alec and Hazel both leaned back from their step, grimacing. You're, 
That's not going over well. That's not going over well, said Alec. Really, Meg? I just think that... Oh. I know what you think. You've made that pretty clear. Oh. Really, Meg? I just think that... Oh, I think you've made that pretty clear. Good grief, Ian. Grow up. But then when Alec looked over at Hazel, she was simply smiling, as though the whole thing were going exactly according to plan. Of course, from her perspective, it was. Then she turned her smile to him. If Alec hadn't been able to see right through her, he might have been tempted to believe this was genuine. If he were the type to fall for such an obvious manipulation, he might have felt a hint of warmth towards her. A sister simply in search for an actual relationship with her brother. It's kind of cute, he thought, and how she believed he, she could outsmart him. Okay, okay, their dad said, and Alec hard heard them pull in the deep breath. We can turn on each other, their mother sighed. You're right, we just got to bed. It's been a long day. Oh, I can't find the book, FYI. For oh, I can't find the book, FYI. Forget it, their dad said. We'll look for it in the morning. Two sets of chair legs scraped against the kitchen tiles, and out Hazel jumped to their feet and slipped into the rooms, just the light and the stairs switch on, announcing their parents' approach. Lying in bed, Alec thought through all the variations in his own plan. The counter and the counter plan was it were tomorrow was party planning day. He heard his mom remind his dad about a thousand times, not that it mattered, since he'd been at work, and she'd been dragging Alec and Hazel to meet Aunt Gigi at the pizzeria instead. It was here that Alec could really ramp up his reconnaissance if he was going to discover what Hazel was actually up to. He could discover in the place where all of these plans and counter plans. What do we do? Do do do? Were to accumulate, he could think of no other reason for why Hazel was so determined to sabotage her own birthday party by allowing Alec to be, well, himself. It had something to do with her birthday on Saturday. Whatever she was planning, it would all go down then. Well, Alec's only real option was to sit back and let Hazel show her cards. It was a matter of time before it happened, and though she'd proven herself more cunning than she'd originally given her credit for, she was no evil genius. That title was reserved for Alec. Sometime after Alec heard his parents' bedroom door shut for the night, the door in the back room, bathroom he shared with Hazel opened. She poked her head in, up, inside. Today was fun she said, and Alec made a quick switch to his conspiring brother act. Yeah, he said. Nice job on the cooking dig, he said. Thanks, Hazel laughed shyly. Oh, please, Alec thought, but he managed to keep from rolling his eyes. Hey, you think we're gonna, like, break them, or? Hey, don't, you don't think we're gonna, like, break them or anything, do you? Hazel said, nah, he said. They can handle it. Trust me, I put them through a lot worse. Hazel nodded and then gave him one more shy smile before shutting the door and padding across the bathroom back to her own room. It was a few minutes before Alex noticed that he was smiling too. Not smiling because he was recounting all of the ways he'd beaten his sister at her own game. Not smiling because he's exposed her for fraud that she is to her parents and friends and everyone else in the world to see. Not yet, anyways. He was smiling because he was enjoying her company. Let get a grip, Alec, he told himself. Then he repeated it to himself over and over that she wasn't as good and pretended to be, but that she was only using him as a means to an end. He reminded himself that alliance was false and temporary, that once he'd revealed her as fraud, they'd go back to the separate ends of the bathroom, and Alec could proceed unfettering and doing whatever it was he wanted to do, only this time without the constant comparison to Golden Hazel. When he when he wiped a pathetic smile from his face and fell asleep with vengeance on his mind. Gigi, what do you think? Should we kick in the extra Fazbear fun witches? Alex and Hazel mom was wrecked on Wednesday. She'd overslept her alarm and shove Alec and Hazel into a car without taking a shower or even brushing her teeth. Her hair was jammed into submission under an old baseball cap. And the dark circles under her eyes made her look almost skeptical skeletal under the shadow of the hat brim. 
Hey, Zolv hadn't made it much better than by asking her in her most concerned voice if she was coming down with something or that she looked absolutely, absolutely sickly. And Alec hadn't made it any better by being <clears throat> nice. You look fine, Mom. You look fine, Mom, he said, which threw their mom in such a loop she only blinked at them both after snapping at them to buckle up and running up two stop signs in order to meet Ma. Aunt Gigi on time at Freddy Fazbear's. Hmm. Now she was standing in the party room with a thoroughly unenthused party pop prepper who was waiting impatiently on answers about Saturday. What on earth is a fun witch? Aunt Gigi asked, leaning her head on the table and immediately lifting it after detecting something sticky. It's a, um, it, it's a, well, her mom tried. But she was distracted by the sight of Alec and Hazel seeming to play together like ski ball machines. You are truly terrible at this game. You're truly terrible at this game, Alec said. I am not, but said Hazel. But after the third gutter ball in the row, Alec just laughed. Okay, it's not my best event, she said. I shine more in a pinball category. Can you even see over the controllers? He asked, rubbing the top of her head roughly. Hazel smiled, and so did Alec. But for different reason, he felt refreshed at the good night's sleep, renewed in his mission to bring his sister down. It was a delicious, cre it's a delicious croissant roll stuffed with your choice of fried macaroni, tater tots, and chocolate marshmallow. <laughs> the the party prepper deep band to Aunt Gigi. What well, sounds utterly repulsive? Aunt Gigi said. The party prepper didn't argue. Yeah, but it's only $20 more, and honestly, I'm not sure if the super, super surprise party package comes with enough food, their mom fretted, finally taking her gaze from the kids and returning to the task at hand. Okay, I'm gonna put my bookmark down. We are halfway through the video, because I am on page 10. Now, this one is a pretty good theory. Okay. I'm gonna drink more after this. So, my theory right here. Golden Hazel and Freddy Fazbear's. Hazel. Golden Hazel, I'm sorry. But it, we, we gotta think about that. We need to touch on that. Golden Hazel is the better version and or the smarter version of Hazel. Think about that. Could that mean Golden Freddy, now this is not a true theory like most of my other ones, but could that mean Golden Freddy is the smarter, more, better version of Freddy? Because he can't, he's not seen through cameras, he's only seen in your office. He's not, he's a lot smarter than Freddy. Freddy is seen, but Freddy is also hidden in the shadows. More aggressive, mean, I guess you could say. While Golden Freddy is a lot more smart with his choices, tricks the player into checking Cam 2B by making the Bonnie noises. So, like, tricking the player into looking over, and then boom, right there. There's only one way to get rid of him, and most people just stay there and fright, and or get tricked. So I believe this brings on to, not a theory, but more information on Golden Freddy to Freddy. We all know Golden Freddy is something. We never think. I don't. I don't know to be honest what Golden Freddy is, but I believe he's a smarter version of Freddy, and or the brother to Freddy. And before you think. Well, actually, Game Theory said that Golden Freddy's a girl. Well, maybe that's right as well. The sister is smarter in this one, not the brother. Any gender can be smarter than the other gender. That's just a known fact. So maybe Golden Freddy's the smarter sister slash brother to Freddy, the brother, because that's canon. So... If you guys are right now in the middle of this video, and remember two brothers that go to Freddy's, or two brother and a sister that go to Freddy's, and then one of them 
when they both die and go into Freddy suits, please remind me of this video, because I will not remember it on my own. I will remember parts of it, but not fully. I'm gonna take one more swig of my Cactus Cooler, 99 cents, and uh, we'll be back onto it. And before you ask me, you should stop drinking it, sodas bad for you, and give me a three paragraph reason. I have three other liters in there. Uh, actually, it's six liters, but two of them, well, whatever. <sighs> so that's a yes on the Freddy Fazbear Fun Witch platter with extra dipping sauces, said the party prepper. No, boy, having had just about enough of this entire interaction. Yes, let's do it, said her mom. Clearly relieved that having made a big position decision, I have these coupons from the paper for Foxy Pirate Palooza special. Can I use those? While their mom and Aunt Gigi ironed out the last of the details, Alec and Hazel wandered the empty pizzeria out of earshot from of her mom and aunt. So what's the big deal with this place anyway? Alec said, worried he was giving himself away. The deep dark truth was that he'd always wanted his own birthday party at Freddy Fazbear's, but he never made enough friends to justify the expense of a big party. Said his parents had always thrown together a Hasbird celebration at home, called it a pool party, party, but it was hard to ignore the reality that only other kids were there were all Hazel's friends she'd allowed to invite in order to fill out the crowd. Hazel shrugged. Finding nonchalance. I don't know. Liar, he said. You've had your birthday here for the last four years in a row. It was the perfect double psych out. He'd go to her into telling him what was so important about her stupid party this year that she'd just think he was trying to have brotherly conversation with her. Why don't you tell me? She challenged, catching Alec mid stare. He didn't realize it, but he was looking at until Hazel did, and quickly looked away. Nice try, she said, tilting her head toward the Yarg Foxy on stage. Hold on a second. I just need to pair, taint, uh, turn to page 120. Put my bookmark here. If Foxy has a voice in this, I'm doing my pirate voice. And before you think you can stop me, and you think I'm going to put a bet on this, let me just tell you one thing. <clears throat> yeah, you and some, you know some. <laughs> I gotta work on that voice. Anyways, there he was in a tall, piratey, foxy greatness. His eye patch, peg-legged, hook-wielding orange fox, not orange, red. In this restaurant, he was positioned as a human-sized plush figure propped by a stage, presumably there taking pictures with, but he played a different role in, Freddy, in every Freddy Fazbear, sometimes greeting visitors at the door, sometimes playing in the band outstage with the others. Whether he was, though, Alex saw him. He was, without a doubt, Alex's favorite character. It's possible, POSSIBLE, that he used to stick his foot in a plastic flower pot and roll a cardboard tube around his hand and pretend to be Yarg Foxy. Clearly, it was also possible that Hazel had some point listenly witness that roleplay. Whatever, he said. Stupid kid stuff. And besides, we're talking about you, not me. And there we're standing in the aisle between the arcade and the stage now. Alec guide the platform where Freddy Fazbear and all his friends performed the animatronic routines. routines. He was... Always a little unsettled by the way their robotic bodies had, were eerily still after the show. While the rest of the restaurant chimed in the clinks of the buzzers of the games, he backed away from the stage unconsciously and was only aware that he'd moved when he was back and his heel hit something. He turned to find himself uncomfortably close to a raised platform holding a smaller version of the bear on stage. Only this bear was, uh, had an unlit sign over and said, Lonely Freddy. Hmm. It was a weird name for a toy, but it was the weirdest parts of it were harder to define. The bear stood stiff, almost at attention. 
His eyes stared straight ahead at the stage. But Alec, I was the strangest feeling that I was still watching him. Maybe I want this year to be different, Hazel said, and Alec jumped a little at her voice. He'd gotten so lost in the st staring Freddy that he forgot she was standing right there. So what do you want? More present? Well, so what do you want? More presents? He asked. You know you're going to get everything you want anyway, he said, and this time he let a little of the venom escape. He couldn't help it. How ungrateful could she be? He was the one who nobody liked, who had to fight for everything, who was constantly misunderstood. There's some stuff even mom and dad can't do, she said, and if Alec started starting to crack, Hazel was too. He could see her getting a little defensive. Trust me, for you, they all move mountains. Hazel frowned at him. They try. They try, you know. Yeah, they try for you. She set her jaw. Only The only reason they do so much stuff for me is because they feel so gu guilty for worrying so much about you. Do you have any idea how much time Dad spent planning that camping trip? Alec did know. As a matter of fact, he listened to them. From the top of the stairs, they orchestrated every detail from the trip in order to keep Alec calm. Like he was some sort of bomb that they had to keep from going off. His eyes drifted again to the bear. Alec got the strangest sensation like he wanted to move their argument elsewhere. Lonely Freddy he thought to himself, more like nosy Freddy. Hazel put her hands on her lips. I bet you didn't even know they moved here for you. I bet they didn't even know they moved here for you. What are you talking about, Alex said, Joan newly confused, his guard was slipping. But this was the turn of events that he has hadn't been expecting. The only reason we live here instead of our old house is because this one's closer to Aunt Gigi, and they think you like her more than than you like them because he, she understands you, she said. We're the, the three, uh, whatever it's, she said, twitching her fingers into air quotes. Well? Alec, well? Alec said, unable to argue. He did like this aunt better than his parents. Don't you think maybe that hurt their feelings a little? Don't you think that hurt their feelings a little bit? She said. For you to like mom's sister better? What was going on here? Where was all this anger coming from? Alec was so confused. Hazel was acting like, like him. If they're so great and I'm so evil, Alec said, losing all sight of the counter counter plan. Then why are you helping me and not them? Of all the moments to clam up, Hazel did just that. She re recovered her facade faster than Alec did, which only worked to intrude Alec more. She somehow managed to gain upper hand despite his five years of experience on her. Hazel? Hazel, where are you? Hazel's green eyes stopped boring at a hole through Alec, long enough to call her from her mom. Coming! She turned on her heel and trotted around the corner toward the party room, leaving Alec to the company in the company of the eavesdropping Freddy. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? He snarled at the bear, and he had to suppress a chill because he swore he seen a reflection of the, in the bear's eyes, almost like a flash. Creeper, he said to it before lopping down the same path his sister had seconds before. The party prepper was back with another question, and their mom had reached peak decision burnout. Hazel, sweetie, do you want to have the chance at the wind tunnel? He indicated a large tube-like enclosure with the words wind tunnel in form shape of a tornado above the contraption. Inside were scraps of paper and confetti left over from the last party. There were game tickets and free toy coupons and glittery strips of cellophane and confetti stuck onto the inside of the tube. I don't care. She, I don't care, she said. But it was such an obvious lie. Alec wasn't fooled and neither was their mom. But honey, you can have a chance at winning a yard foxy. Is that what you want? Wait, what? Alex said, utterly betrayed. He couldn't help it, but he, 
but the, it was the ultimate betrayal. Alec had never seen Hazel's face turn that shade of red. Her entire face and neck looked practically scowled, as though she could feel his stare through the back of her head. She ripped around to confirm that Alec had been witness to the whole exchange. Oh, I saw, he thought. And the one thing, the one thing you knew I wanted. Okay, I'll bite. Aunt Gigi interjecting just in time to clue all of the United. What's a yard foxy? The party prepper immediately poured at the top level of the prize show. A huge red sign proclaiming the prize. 10,000 tickets. Is that a pirate fox? Their mom said dismissively. Aunt Gigi walked over to the prize shelf. She tried to get a closer look. I don't get it, she said. The party prepper sighed. I don't either, their mom said, but kids go nuts for the thing. Hazel looked down at the ground, her ears scarlet. Does it do anything? Aunt Gigi said. It swings a, it swings a hook, said their mom. Oh, then what's the thing that follows the kids around? Said Aunt Gigi, directing the question to her mom. Huh? You know... Aunt Gigi said, snapping her fingers to try to trigger the memory. The bear or whatever. Oh, right, her mom said, turning back to the party prepper, whose eyes were slow to leave her phone. Then, without answering their mom's question, the prepper turned a dial on her hip, clipped walkie-talkie, and pressed a finger on her headset. Someone get Daryl to do the Lonely Freddy demo? They could hear the response from the headset, even when she pressed it on her head. Daryl's on break. The prepper released a sigh so long, Alec wondered how she didn't pass out. When, without a word, she crossed the restaurant toward the platform, holding a familiar-looking two-foot bear. The rest of them caught on after a minute and followed her like a little quail. The prepper bent her elbow and stationed her hand palm up toward the bear. It looked identical to the one Alec stared down between the stage and the arcade. Same stock straight posture, same dead stare to the distance. This is a lonely Freddy, the party prepper began, reading to a script from memory in a tone somewhere between apathy and contempt. At Freddy Fazbear's, we believe that no child should have no experience the wonder and delight of Freddy Fazbear's family pizza alone. Using pregnant nip talk. Using patented technology and a touch of that Freddy Fazbear magic, your child can engage in getting to know you session with a bear. Freddy will learn all about your child's favorite things, just like a true friend. Aunt Gigi leaned close to her mom. Is it just me, or this lonely Freddy sound like a cure for the unwanted kid? Gigi! Meg, seriously. Meg, seriously. It's a mechanical last resort. As in, no one wants to play with this kid, so there's a machine that'll do it instead. The party prepper close enough to her ear lifted an eyebrow, but didn't argue. Alec coughed and muttered, losers. <coughs> but it was such a terrible act. If there were ever a kid to do, who would have been foisted onto a lonely Freddy at their birthday party, it could have been Alec. He might have known that if he'd ever been invited to one. For the safety of your children, we must ask that you refrain from climbing on, riding, or otherwise mistreating the lonely Freddies. Parents or guardians assume full responsibility for the health and welfare of their children in the presence of the proper charity technology. And with that, the party prepper's script came to a close, and she walked back toward the party room. The rest of them followed, and the decision about the wind tunnel still left unmade. The lonely friend Freddy tour had done nothing to resolve the question at hand, and they were trying the party prepper's last ounce of already depleted patience. Aunt Gigi leaned into their mom and muttered, Can't you just buy a fox and script the drama? What if she doesn't get the winning coupon? What if she doesn't get the winning coupon and the win contraption? Her mom looked fanat fanatic. It's not the same as winning it. Hazel overheard their debate, and though Alec could what tell she was trying to play it cool, Hazel eyes kept darting back to the top of the shelf in the prize corner, where brand new Yarg Foxy sat in the box, ready to be taken home. Underneath the bright red sign said, Win me in the wind tunnel. It was so obvious she wanted the fox, so why was she pretending not to? Of course, all that mattered was that she wanted it. I think I got something stuck in my throat. 
And when you don't get it, everyone's going to see you for the spoiled phony you are. Finally, Alex counter counter plan was coming together. Hazel, you should do the wind tunnel, he said, in a voice carefully calibrated to the right volume to be heard by both her and his mom. Aunt Gigi cocked her head at Alec, who leaned back to her mom. Did you switch to the organic milk? Her mother pinched the bridge of her nose like she did whenever she felt a migraine coming on, then turned to the party prepper. Just add the wind tunnel to the package. Just add the wind tunnel to the package, she said. Back at home. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, is that on every other page? Why is that spec? What? Wait. There's three stars. Why are there stars? I'm gonna have to check the first book. I'll get back to you guys on uh, the next reading video. Weird. Um. Anyone got personal contact with, like, a game theory? Maybe he can get on this. The stars. Why are there stars on certain pages? Back at home, Alec and Hazel kept up their new routine with Alec playing the hero and Hazel playing the villain. Their mom pointedly ordered Alec to keep away from the freshly mopped kitchen floor. Hazel responded by trekking across the tiles with muddy shoes. Their mom asked Alec to sort the recycling, and Hazel instead dumped the bottles of newspaper papers directly to the household garbage dumpster. Hazel, what on earth has gotten into you? Their mom finally broke, and Aunt Gigi watched a wide-eyed count wonder at, as Hazel responded. I have no idea what you're talking about, she said, then scampered upstairs and slapped her bedroom door shut. Alec took a seat and a usual step at the stop of the, the stairs. It's like she's possessed, her mom said. It's like she's, it's like she's ten. Aunt Gigi said, and Alec had to laugh because Aunt Gigi had no idea she was helping her little act along. The more her parents thought they were crazy, the more they attempted to finally do any with the parenting books and remember that Alec wasn't a problem to be solved. Or in this case, he supposed Hazel. It's like they switched glasses, Gigi. It's creepy, their mom said. What's this? Aunt Gigi said, but Alec couldn't see what she was referring to form his place on the stairs. It's just a, it's just this book, their, mo their mom said, the exhaustion in her voice making it clear that she lost face in the plan planner. Meg, you know, I think it's great how you and Ian are always working to make sure you don't raise a couple of serial killers. Thanks, Gigi, their mom said direly. Glad to know our efforts are evident. I mean it. I think you guys are really good parents, said Aunt Gigi. There's something a but in there somewhere, their mom said. But don't you ever wonder if all your efforts to make them normal kids, whatever that means, you may, if maybe you've, if we, what? Their mom said. Didn't sound so much defensive as persuaded of the answer. Oh, frick, that was close. <clears throat> Uh, that's page 121, ladies and gentlemen. Um, any final thoughts and or theories? <clears throat> For this episode. Yes, 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 yes. So. Okay, okay. Lonely Freddy in between the two stages. But... I was thinking, okay, so they're at a display table of sorts, so they're just looking at a display, yada yada, that's cool, but then they take the, him to a display. So what was that lonely Freddy if he wasn't a display? What was he? My theory? A rogue or a regular lonely Freddy following the kid. I can't say possessed, but maybe possessed. The star thing is kind of weird, though. And the golden hazel is very, very, very interesting, I guess I could say as a fact. Anyways, I'm Stonesy Boy, and uh, this is reading. I'm soon going to make an intro video or whatever to my channel.
That means it's 8 o'clock. Hope you guys have a super fantastic, wonderful day. See you guys later.